Most runners train for a time they think they should hit, not the one that they're actually ready for. Here's how to stop training harder and instead to start training smarter. In this episode, I'll be going over why most runners get the 5K wrong and how to fix it. How to build real speed endurance without blowing up, the secret to lactate tolerance that most training plans, and I'm gonna say most coaches ignore. How to shift your mindset so you stop hitting the wall, and if you get all the way to the middle, I actually have a free download training plan that will help you run a fast 5K and a whole bunch more. To help me with all of this, I'll be joined by Mike Trees. He's an ex-pro runner and triathlete. Now he's an online coach to thousands with almost half a million followers on Instagram. I'm Darren D. Lake, sub three hour marathon, 10 hour Ironman finishing, run coach and human experimental guinea pig of my own self of the last 30 years, trying to figure out how to get 1% better each day and tell all the self-coach runners of the world how to actually do that. Let's get into the episode. So I'm training to run a 1559 in the next two years. Um, the fastest I've run Four. is 5K, 5K. 5,000. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 5K, yeah. I've, yeah, yeah. Um, I've ran, the fastest I've ran is about uh, 17, 17.05. Um, so yeah. here's a bit of my potential. I, I, I prote- Right now, I currently can run a 455 mile, and um, I'm running about 100Ks a week. I do two quality days plus a long run. So one is a kind of VO2 speed work-ish day, and then one is a tempo day, uh, sub-threshold. Um, lots of easy runs. I'd say definitely very 80-20 with my running. And um, I do strength work plyos. I, do, I haven't gotten injured properly in the past maybe two years. I'm on it. You know, I'm at my race weight. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I sleep well. I've got all the variables. Uh, mm-hmm. two, two questions. On my quality days, do you think I'm doing too many? So te- the third run, the, sorry, the long run is technically a quality day because it, it can be up to about two hours, two hours, 10 minutes, um, depending on where I am. Uh, do you think I'm doing too many? Because I feel great, have no injuries. I, I don't even get DOMS anymore. Um, recovery is great. You know, 24 hours later, I'm, I'm fully recovered. I feel good. I don't do the next workout until 48 hours or later. But uh, do you think I should drop it down to two? Qu- so one interval day and one long run, or you think I'm good where I am? Going back to more basics do you know if you train correctly and efficiently and maximize your training what the percentage is the breakdown between aerobic and anaerobic for 5000 meters it's 90 percent. i do know that a quick run science nerd break so what does anaerobic even mean aerobic running uses oxygen so think long steady miles and anaerobic that short intense efforts using glycogen fast no oxygen needed so All out as fast as you can, running from a lion or a dog, 50 meter, 100 meter sprints. Your body burns way hotter. You fatigue quicker, but you also get faster if you train it right. Actually, I would say if you get it right, it's that's that's more of a a 10,000 meters. I would say you you could be getting 25% anaerobic if you can really maximize your training for 5K. So I would say that you're underachieving on the anaerobic work. I would give you a six-week block of a 3K session for speed uh, and a 5K session uh, and then a 10K session for stamina. Uh, And I would vary and and I would probably push you the limit. I might even in the six-week block, depending on how you respond, because you're good anaerobically, if I can get your anaerobic engine really ticked up, I might even put a bit of 1,500-meter work in there, uh, 3,000 meters and 5,000 stuff, and really focus on the short end and, and play to your strengths. You said you came from 800. So play to your 8, 1,500 strengths to get the 5K. You, you get a marathon runner and think, well, they've got this big aerobic engine. Let's just maximize their 100 mile weeks, their, their 10K sessions, their 5K and their aerobic capacity. But I, I think there's, a, there's two ways of skinning a 5,000. And you're, you're, you're borderline that you could push in a little bit more speed work and really get out and get used to running some, some Ks in, you know, three, three, 10 Ks and, and going quicker than race pace. So when you get the start line, you're getting through the first two couple of Ks thinking, well, this is easy. You're sitting there and you're, you're waiting for that last two K when it kicks in, but you, you can cope with a lactic. Okay. So I'm thinking, cool. I've got the training block, but then Mike trees drops this bomb. It's not just about speed. It's about how much pain you can tolerate. And the last one kilometer, half mile, that is all lactate. 
So you might be asking yourself, hey, Darren, how do I put this into practice? Don't worry. I built a free base training and 5K plan that does exactly what Mike Trees is talking about. It builds that speed and lactate tolerance without destroying your legs. You'll also get the 1% Better Runner newsletter. That's five minutes every week in your email inbox, which goes deep on mental strength mindset, VO2 max, 10K marathon, all these types of training. The link at the QR code here to get it, the link below or in the show notes of your podcast player. Let's get back into the episode. So what you've got is you've got the threshold work for lactic where we work around the threshold, but you've got the lactic tolerance. So towards the end, the last kilometer of 5K, it doesn't matter how much lactic you, you build up if you can cope with it. And, and there's some phenomenal stories of you know people like Sebastian Coe that could hold, I think it was 17, 18 millimoles of, of lactic you know, per milliliter of, of, per liter of blood in his body, whereas most people, you, know, you, you struggle at four. So that's where the threshold is considered. The four millimole level is, is a technical term people use. They get past four and they can't really run much. But if you can cope with its absolute tolerance, not the threshold, but the tolerance as well, that's where you can maximize it. So that tolerance might even get you something like 15, 20 seconds in the last one kilometer if you can cope with it. That's huge over 5K. All right, let's clear something up. Lactate doesn't shut you down. You shutting down shuts you down. So it's your brain, actually. The key is avoiding the burn. It's training your body to hold form and speed while it burns. And you're basically training your brain to go, hey, I'm not killing myself. We can handle it. That is tolerance. That's where races are won and best times are made. So uh, I would say that what you're doing is essentially right. But I would give you a six-week block at the end where we tweak it and work to your strengths. Uh, and it might take a couple of blocks to work out exactly what that is. Is it 1,500 work? Is it 3,000 meter work? Uh, but I would give you something quicker. And you're on the borderline. At your age, I could cope with three hard sessions a week. So uh, Plus the long run? I oh, yeah, yeah. The long run, I don't consider that a session. That's an easy... That, oh, that's, wow. that's separate. So it, we're talking at the level you're running at. I mean, for a beginner runner uh, and someone at a, a, a lower level, sounds rude saying a lower level, but that haven't built up and haven't got the history that you've got. I think when you're looking at 17 minutes, we could look at a Tuesday, a Thursday, Saturday, uh, and then do the long run on a Sunday just as the recovery run. And for 5,000, you really, you know, in the last period, you really need to be doing 60 minutes. You don't need to be, you know, over the winter, yeah, you can build it up 90 minutes longer run. But when you're doing that real speed work at the end, you don't want the 90 minutes because that's going to knock off the, the speed at the top end. So I wouldn't have you running more than 60 minutes for a long run at the end, but I would have you doing uh, a set of 12 400s, we'll say, on the track on Tuesday. Uh, maybe something uh, a bit longer on the Thursday uh, where we're doing a bit more and you're doing something like uh, 8 by one k just taking a little bit over the stamina. Uh, and then a 5K time trial park run on a Saturday. And then as we get closer, we might cut those 8 by one k down to 5 five by one k just to get you running quicker than race pace. Uh, we might alter those 12 by 400 sometimes to 12 by 300 uh, to, to really get the, the leg speed in there and, and give you a, a nice, decent rest so we can get you, you know, running quick. That was the moment. I'd been doing a lot of things right but not those things. So things like short, very fast reps, weekly slower tempo runs, and using park runs as a time trial. It felt like sharpening the blade instead of swinging a dull ax harder. Uh, and then on the easy days, this is what people get wrong. I could get you running some 50 meter strides. Well, if, if you're, you, you said the words yourself, five seconds ATP, uh, some people might say it's up to seven, but it's 50 meters it's fine. If you get a long jog between, you could then even do some strides on the days between. So we could really maximize the amount of speed work you're doing. So it looks as though you're doing a lot of hard work, but you're not. And another run science nerd break. So speed endurance is this awkward zone that's just above race pace. It's not sprinting. It's not cruising. So VO2 max or even faster than VO2 max, probably close to your 3K fitness and touching one mile race all out fitness. It's also where most breakthroughs happen, but you can rejoice because you don't need much to get the benefits. Just a few minutes total per week broken down into short intervals. Does that help? 
Wow, that was <laughs> that. That's what I've, I've been wanting to hear because I've, you know, I've done, I've self coached, and now I'm really considering using you as my coach. Um, so <laughs> that, that was <laughs> you've sold me. Um, yeah, I. It's funny because you know, three years ago, I wouldn't have been able to handle what I'm doing now. I've slowly built up to this. But I'm like, I'm not sore anymore. And yeah, yeah, I don't have to be. So I know pro runners really don't get sore. I had a friend that was a pro. He was like, I don't get sore anymore. He ran a 147, 800. And he was like, I rarely am sore after workouts. I understand that's what happens. So you can't, you can't gauge, you know, no, did I go hard enough by how sore you are? But, um, I definitely am really fresh. <laughs> and, and I'm like, okay, that means I can handle more work. And, and, and like you said, I, I'm sitting back going, I don't have this crazy aerobic engine. I've never had it. I can build it. It's going to take me, you know, even more years, but it totally makes sense mm -hmm. that I capitalize on my speed. Like I, you know, I do the, the, the V dot calculator, which I'm pretty sure you're, you're well aware of, um, mm -hmm. Jack Daniels. And it's like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I'm like, you know, I, I basically, I know I, if I trained, I could probably run a 440 mile one mile. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, maybe even 430. If I properly trained for a year, I think I could, I still have that in me. That means I should be able to run like a 220 marathon, 215. So I'm like, the V dot score doesn't make any sense with what I'm actually, you know, what you can do in the V dot score never makes sense. Um, you have to, it's just, that's your potential, but you have to actually work at it. So, um, I know that I'm heavier on the, the speed. So I need to work that, especially for the 5k. Cause like you said, that is more speed. And, you know, in my head, I'm like, it's more aerobic. And I think, I think it's a combination. I haven't, my brain has not seen my body do the speed, mm. you know, past five minutes, the three, three, 10 per K that I need to do three twelve per K. It hasn't seen mm -hmm. it. So it's not allowing me to do it. So it's like, it's just like this, this subconscious thing that's happening where my, I just freak out. If I'm whole, if I'm like, I, I start, the lactic starts building up, I freak out. And I slow it down a bit, you know, I hit 320, 325, and it's like, okay, that's comfortable. And that's not going to get me where I want to go. So it's... Embrace it. Embrace it. <laughs> you know, I, I'd have you doing, I'd get you doing a three in the build-up. I'd get you doing a 3K time trial on the track, getting under 930. That's your aim, you know. Yeah. Uh, and it's quicker than race pace, but it's, you know, if you can cope with that, you're, you're, you're coping with the, the lactic build-up. Uh, it's making you you're more able to cope with it. Uh, uh, and it'll really pay dividends uh, when you, you come out and do the race. Not so beneficial for 10K, but for 5K, it's still, you know, I think you could, you know, take big chunks off at the time. All right. All right. Well, I'm, it's, I'm actually going into the last six weeks of, of this, of this block. So it's a 12 week block, but I broke it into kind of like, uh, uh -huh. build, building in so i'm ending my vo2 max so i actually wanted to do more race specific so this is perfect timing because i actually <laughs> will implement this um over the next four to six weeks and i'll probably do four just to be safe um because i don't want to break myself and if i do well then I'll, I'll i'll either sign up with you or i'll just implement it but um yeah i'm, I'm definitely you you've sold me you i like that i like six, that. six weeks to make a physiological change uh less than three you're probably not going to do much so forward work uh, a lot of uh, my the guru that I, I I like Arthur Lydiard who based things you know he he could get people fit you know in just a little bit of speed work on on three or four weeks uh, so long as the aerobic engine's there it doesn't take too much anaerobic work to to get you fit so four weeks would be perfect four weeks uh, and a nice taper uh, to, to freshen up uh, and you'll be raring to go. If you want to apply everything that we talked about or even just a couple things right now to your own training and racing, grab my free 5K training plan that builds speed and lactate tolerance the smart way. Get that at the QR code here, link below, or check your podcast player show notes. And if you're not sure your base is strong enough, that's where you need to start. So watch this next episode on base training, everything you need to know, fully comprehensive base training toolkit as it breaks down exactly how to structure your base training and why skipping it is the fastest way to get it injured or plateauing and you won't be able to run a fast 5k so get that here below or in the show notes of again your podcast player if you're listening peace